Hello friends, I'm glad we could be together again today. Are you well? I hope so. Turn to the pe person next to you, give them a punch saying, how are you? Good to see you. Tonight, we are digging into the story of Lazarus. Not Lazarus, as sometimes is said by myself and others on the platform, but Lazarus, the story of how he was raised to de to, from the dead. And uh, today's study is study chapter five, Dead Man Walking. And it's gonna be a fantastic time. We're gonna unpack that together. But before we get into that, How's the snack situation? We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, the homemade snacks, the healthy version of the snacks. Any, anyone doing really well on that front? Um, my group has, has heard that word and has come through with the goods. So well done, well done. And uh, tonight, hopefully we'll be uh, having a good time unpacking scripture and sharing stories as well of what God is doing in our life. Well, Dead Man Walking, where we see the story of how Lazarus was dead for four days. Jesus comes and um, he is raise, raises him to life. And we see all sorts of themes in this passage. We see Jesus, um, the shortest verse is that Jesus wept. And we see, we unpack that tonight of what was going on there. Was Jesus just mourning? Um, or, or did he have something bigger in view that he was crying over the state of humanity and 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 death itself, which I think is what's part of what's going on there. But we see, we see the grief um, of Lazarus's household and that Jesus entering into the grief process. We see life, themes of life and death, which for the ancient world, this was a lot more common than what it is in our world today. Um, many of us have experienced loved ones. Um, maybe it's still raw for you uh, in this situation of recently saying goodbye to somebody, uh, grieving the loss. But for many of us, we're quite insulated from the death process. We, we have people who are literally paid to do that for us. And we have hospitals um, where it's the pro whole process is very sanitized. Whereas in first century um, Jewish culture, this was something that they dealt with all the time, um, where the infant mortality rate was super high, at least three times what it is now. Um, there was the average life expectancy was, was also very, very low in the pre-modern world. Although some people did live in their, to their 70s, 80s, 90s, it was not uncommon for people to die in their, in their 30s. Um, we, we see by ancient archeology. span But not only that, is that in the Roman era, era of where, when Jesus came into the picture, there would be, um, rebels and revolutionaries of the state would also be crucified and they would be, this would be a public spectacle on the roads as people would travel on foot. They would see, literally see death um, all the time. And, and so people would bury their own dead. They would, didn't have people to do that for them. And so this was, they were much more Death was much more in their face and than what it is today. And we see that in, in the story. And so for us today, as we look at Jesus being the, res the resurrection and the life, and we're talking about eternity, we, we very much grapple with uh, the, the, the brevity and the shortness of our own life that often only happens when we go to funerals. Or I think very rarely do... Um, the, av the average Australian person really thinks about death. In fact, I was having a look at the top 12 fears, um, just looking at a list, uh, a quick list on a Google search, and, and death wasn't in the top 12 things that I looked up in terms of fears. Fear of dogs was on there. There was fear of injections. I mean, that makes sense. There was fear of thunder and lightning, but there was no fear of death. And I think that's because probably, we're so, because we're so insulated from, from death, that we don't actually give a lot of time and thought to what happens at the end of life or, or our own mortality. But in the Bible, Jesus talks about the reality of life and death all the time. And certainly the story of, of Lazarus does. And the Bible says a lot of things um, about it. Uh, we first see this uh, in, we see this in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 34, Lord, Remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. That's good news. This, you thought this was going to be encourage, encouraging time together tonight. It's quite sobering. Uh, that my days are numbered and that my life is fleeing away. 
Uh, Psalm 119 uh, verse 19 says this, I am here on earth for just a little while. But you know that there's something good and true uh, about thinking about our own mortality and that our life, the life that we live on earth is only but a snapshot of eternity. And, and that when we forget about eternity and that the life beyond this life, we actually live for temporary things. And our perspective gets stuck on things that don't matter as much. But I think that, man, we need to have an eternal perspective. Um, I've just got a few books here that I personally found helpful. This one by John Bevere, Driven by Eternity. That's the big concept of that we need to live our life. We've got one life to live and one life to give to God and, and make sure we're doing that um, with the end in mind. Uh, that, that's a, a good one. Uh, another one, more theological, um, is N.T. Wright's Surprised by Hope. Pastor Cass talked about this one. That's amazing. Just looking at digging into the resurrection and why we believe what we believe. The other one is a little bit different. Um, the Great Divorce. Uh, this is kind of a story, allegory, that C.S. Lewis, in such a helpful way, talks about the reality of heaven um, and hell and how people end up there. Um, I found that really um, stimulating and really great. But also encouraging. I think um, we, we should be thinking about these things and thinking about how we can best use um, this life for the glory of God. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.18. Let me just read this to you. So in light of, in light of this, the eternal reality that as Christians that we know to be true, it says this, so we fix our eyes not on, on what we can see in the temporary, but what, in, what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Um, in Hebrews 11, in the, the hall of faith, it says, talks about all those people, uh, incredible people in the Old Testament. And it, and it then goes on to uh, say this, all these great people died in faith. They did not get the things that God promised to his people, but they saw, they saw them coming in the future and were glad. They said they were like visitors and strangers on the earth. They were waiting for a better country, a heavenly country. So God is not ashamed to be called their God because he has prepared a city for them. And uh, talking about the reality and the hope that is to come, that, that where, O oh death, is your sting, that Christ has been swallowed up in victory and that we can actually talk, we don't mourn as those who have no hope in Christ. And it's good that we talk about those things. Um, in our study today, it's that famous, uh, the famous quote from C.S. Lewis about how we are to traverse this life in light of eternity. And, and, and how, when we, if you've ever seen, been through the, the difficult process of saying goodbye to somebody or someone's been really sick and on the, or, or, or really old to the point of almost a point of death, there's something about that you think, this is not right. You just, everybody, even those who aren't people of faith, there's something, we've got a longing that, and, and it, there's a reality that this is not the way it's supposed to be. And, and that's, I think, Jesus, he's weeping and, and he's raising him from the dead and, and he's on a mission because this death is not God's design or his purpose um, for us and that there is more that he opened up for us. But we see some of that, that feeling, that heart, and, and that C.S. Lewis comes through in Mere Christianity. It says this, Creatures are not born with desires unless satisfaction for those desires exist. A baby feels hunger because, well, there is such a thing as food. A duckling wants to swim because there is such a thing as water. If I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. I must keep alive in myself the desire for my true country, which I shall not find until after death. I must never let it 
get snowed under or turned aside, I must make it the main object of my life to press on to that country and to help others do the same. That is that we live for eternity, that we have something in us that knows death is not the end. And of course, in Christ, the resurrection and the life, he has given us eternal hope. He has pioneered a path through death to eternal life. And this is what we're talking about in the story of Lazarus tonight. Let's pray together. Why don't you join me? Father, we thank you for the wonder of Scripture and that we see all these things like the the perfection of God's timing, even though it's a mystery to us when there are delays, but you are working and purposing and bringing glory to yourself in ways and working on a canvas that we We is far too large for us to comprehend. So, Lord, as you are working in our our life, as there are things in the flesh, in this world that we are struggling with or waiting for on this side of eternity, Lord, may we have hope in Jesus. And just like this story today, that we would know that nothing is impossible for you, that our faith may be expanded to the the wonderfulness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.